Hey, do you want to hear a message from God? If so, watch this episode of the Authentic Christian Podcast. Today's episode, we're talking about does God or the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is God, Acts 5, um, speak directly to people today? And, um, you know, I guess what would you guys say that if you went out and asked a hundred people, how many out of a hundred specific, I'm just kidding. Uh, what would people say? Give me some examples of what people would say. If you went out on the street with a microphone and said, does God or the Holy Spirit speak directly to people today? What do you think some answers think you'd some hear about? Say, yeah. You know, he's a quiet little voice. Yeah. Your quiet little voice is using not getting close quiet to the microphone. That's better. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. So he's that quiet yeah. little voice. Okay. He is. I don't know. Some people claim that they, uh, they think God is speaking to him. Not always like in a loud booming sentence, but he's like, you know, he's that little whisper. That well, and they go to the story of Elijah in the old Testament and say that like, it's just like that, you know, like in Elijah in the old Testament, you know, there was like this like uh, earthquake and he's like, the God wasn't in the earthquake and there's this wind and the God wasn't in the wind. And there was this, and there was a still small voice and they'll say, that's exactly what it's like for me today. Right. Well, I've heard someone recently say like, you know, if you want to be able to, to discern the voice of God, like first you have to know the scripture because, and then when he speaks to you, you'll know it's his voice. But I mean, then you well, hear the Holy Spirit told me X, Y, Z and different things. Yeah. Like I've had people over the years say like, you know, the spirit or God spoke to me or the Holy Spirit told me X. And I'm like, that's interesting that he allegedly told you that because I know that the Bible says the exact opposite of what you're saying. Right. But there are a lot of people that think that God speaks directly to us today. And so we're going to take a look at that in the episode and say, okay, does that make sense? Does that line up with scripture? Uh, what about some of the passages in scripture that people normally point to? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to talk about them. So, you know, what does the Bible say about um, God or the Holy Spirit speaking to us today? Um, I guess let's start the ways that God has spoke throughout scripture, because obviously we want to go to the Bible. And so, you know, I guess before we dive in though, um, you know, what, what's one of the things that God, we have the freedom to make what? Free, free will to make our own choice. Yeah. yeah, we have free will. We have the freedom to make our own choice. So what does that mean when we come to something in the Bible? Like God will do what? He'll what? Allow you Allow to you. believe a lie. Yeah, like he'll, yeah. He'll, he'll give you the option to choose the truth or to believe a lie. And like, you know, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12 talks about, for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion. Well, what reason? Go there in your Bibles. Look at verse, look at verse 10. Okay. With all unrighteous deception, this is 2 Thessalonians 2.10, mm -hmm. among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Like there's lots of people in the world today that claim to be religious. Mm -hmm. They say they want to study the Bible. They say they want to obey God. And you can show them the truth and they'll see it and they don't like it. And so they do exactly what these people did. They refuse to receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. So they see the truth. They don't love it. They push it away. They hold on to man-made doctrines or they just say, well, I want my sexual freedom, so I'm not going to listen to the Bible. And then verse 11, for that reason, if they reject the truth, God will send them a strong delusion. He will allow them to believe a lie. So yeah. what the second part of that verse says. So like, I mean, for instance, just we just got back from lunch and I was discussing with some people on Facebook and it's like, you can show them a verse and no matter what you show them, how plain and simple and clear it is, they're caught up in this, these group of reformed theology. They like, you show them a verse and they just go, well, what about Romans nine? It's like, they always go to Romans nine and John six. It's like, well, what if your interpretation that's wrong? There's a reason you can't reconcile all these passages together. Right. Yeah. And so what you have here is people that refuse to believe the truth. So God says, I'll let you believe a lie. That's why they're so super sincere about it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so Basically, the, the problem with that is verse 12. This is what it says, the result, that they will be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So it's like, yeah, God gives us free will and he'll allow you to believe a lie. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, everybody, even us included, we talk about this all the time. When we look at scripture, we have to say, okay, am I forcing something on this? Am I putting, am I reading everything through the lens of this verse or that verse? Because ultimately we're going to be judged by it, yeah. you know? So, all right, let's start sure. at how God talked to people. In the Old Testament, what are some different ways that God spoke to people? Well, the first time he just spoke to them, it seems verbally. Okay. You know, he's in the garden. Okay, Garden of Eden. Yeah. And um, he speaks to Adam. He's, okay. I don't know, he calls for them after they've sinned. Right? Yep, that's right. <clears throat> um, before that, he spoke to him when he's talking about creating Eve, right? Okay. Verbally. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's one way. God spoke, yeah. says, you know, speaks out of heaven many, many times in the Old Testament. Um, 
what's some of the other ways that he appears? Maybe the the phrase angel of the Lord would help a little bit in the Old Testament. Yeah. You're talking about Exodus 3? Sure. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, just that God came in physical form, Moses in the burning bush. Yeah, there's a character in the Old Testament. We talked about, if you haven't seen some of the stuff we've already covered, um, we, did, we talked about the pre-incarnate Christ in the Old Testament, which seems to be the angel of the Lord. Um, angel is the, the Hebrew malach, which just means messenger. Malach, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to do it properly. No idea, but uh, it means messenger in Hebrew. So it's used not only, actually it's used in Genesis 31 or 32 of human messengers. So the word just means messenger. Sometimes it's created beings like angels. Sometimes it's humans. And sometimes it's used of the second person that God had, the pre-incarnate Christ. Hmm. And so uh, in Exodus 3, it says an angel, the Lord spoke from the middle of the bush and then it drops the angel up and it says the Lord. Mm -hmm. So in the old Testament, there are many times where God seems to be the second person that God had Christ pre-incarnate took on human form and interacted uh, with people. Um, it yeah, seems I think, I think this is one of those, but you can read the book yeah. or listen about that. in one of the campfire stories. Yeah. Campfire was. stories. We talk yeah. about that. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to go through a list of them in depth right now, but yeah. uh, with Hagar, I believe he comes to Hagar whenever um, Sarai banishes her with Ishmael. Uh, I know he comes to Jacob. It's who Jacob wrestles with in Genesis 32. Um, Hosea 12 talks about that too. He wrestles with the angel and he wrestled with God. And Hebrew parallelism shows that that angel was, was God. Um, you know, are the commander of the armies, Lord Joshua 5, before they go to Jericho, that seems to be the pre-incarnate Christ. And Isaiah 6 is the vision Isaiah sees, which John 12, 41 identifies as the pre-incarnate Christ. So there's lots of in the Old Testament. I mean, you know, we have a whole lesson on that. But yeah. I mean, I think I think pretty much every uh, instance of God being represented in the Israelites' wanderings and when he's communing with Moses is still talking about the pre-incarnate Christ because mm -hmm. he's the one that seems to be that said, I am, you know, yeah. who, who shall I tell that sent me? I am. Yeah. And then in the new Testament, he repeats that phrase yeah. to let them know yeah. who he is. Yeah. Right. So, and they I'd picked up stones those, to kill him. I mean, you can yeah. say like the fire by night, the cloud yeah. in the sky, the time when he passed by in front of Moses, I say that's most likely the pre-incarnate yeah. Christ. He has a lot of, a lot of instances. So he, so he spoke vocally from heaven. Mm -hmm. He came in physical form. Um, he spoke through dreams. I mean, if you think yeah. back to Genesis where, um, Abimelech had a dream where he was going to take, um, take Abraham's wife, Sarai, you know, basically as his wife and he has a dream. Um, Jacob had dreams. So, you know, there's lots of different ways in the old Testament that God spoke to people. Um, what about the new Testament? Right? So this is not going to be a 45 minute episode on just how God spoke in the old Testament. But what about the new Testament? What are some examples of the way that God spoke during the time of, um, you know, new Testament texts? I mean, one of the first ones, uh, Matthew, you know, the angel was telling Joseph through a dream about, um, Jesus coming, um, Matthew one, 19 through 21. Was that a dream or is it directly? I think actually I might've tied a time. I think the angel came to Joseph directly in a okay. dream through Mary. I don't remember. But let's go do it. Yeah. But I mean, okay, well, let's say this. There was the, Peter had vision in Acts 10. Yeah. So like visions, dreams, God, God spoke to people in different ways, you yeah. know? And so, um, you know, the book of Revelation was a dream. He's on the Isle of Patmos, mm -hmm. right? Well, I say a dream. It was, it was, a it was caught up in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And he was yeah. given a vision. Yeah. No, yeah. I was going to say caught up in the spirit, but he's in the spirit on the Lord's day. Chapter one says. So yeah, through, through visions, um, God spoke directly to people. He had angels appear to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of times when angels appeared to people, they were what? Terrified, right? So that's one of the ways that he spoke in the New Testament. Um, the transfiguration. Yeah, Matthew 17, I think it is. There was a transfiguration where basically Peter, James, and John um, went up and saw Jesus transfigure himself and Moses and Elijah were there. And uh, yeah. Yeah. In that case, you hear two of the members of the Godhead speak. Yeah. That's, yeah. Right? Isn't it? The, the God speaks for the father speaks from heaven at Jesus' baptism and at the transfiguration. Yeah. And at the baptism, you see it's three, all three of the all Godhead the Trinity because the spirit descends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, we talked about through angels. Um, and then another way that God spoke, which is probably what we're going to spend the most of our time talking about is through the Holy spirit right? The way God spoke in the first century. And that's really, we're going to talk a little bit in a couple of minutes about inspiration. Um, because a lot of people have this idea, well, that's how God spoke, you know, in the old Testament, that's how he spoke during different times during the life of Christ. 
So obviously that's how he speaks to us today, which would be what you'd assume unless there were texts to tell you otherwise, right? So what would you point to as a text that would show that, hey, I'm going to help you out here. God spoke in many different ways in different times to different people by the different people, prophets. But in these last days, (laughs) Hebrews 1, 1 through 2. Okay, someone read it. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Uh, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets in verse two has in these last days spoken to us by son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he has made the worlds. Great. So basically you have this idea that God spoke in a lot of, a lot of different ways in different Mm -hmm. times, but now he's speaking to us through his son. So then the question becomes, okay, how did God speak through the son? Well, obviously when he was on earth, he did what? Yeah, like literally. Literally. literally he, yeah. The son came and opened his mouth. And that's spoke. right. And that's what, you know, in John 1, John 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And John 1, 18 said that his purpose was to declare the father, to make known the father, basically yeah. to be the messenger, to say, hey, you want to know what the father looks like? This is him in human form, right? And so when you look at that, it leads you to the point, okay, we know that it's obvious the way Jesus spoke when he was on earth in physical form. What about after he left? Go to John chapter 16. I guess you got your software, yeah. yeah. Uh, yep, I'm there. Go to John 16. We've talked about some of this in previous episodes, but this is important, especially for this topic. So we're going we're gonna to cover it again. Let's go to John 14, actually. Let's look at a couple more passages instead of just leaving, you know, looking at one. Go to John 14, 25. And go read 25 and 26. John 14, 25 and 26. And they asked him saying, why then do you baptize yourself? Or baptize, why then do you? Are you in the wrong verse? John 14, 25? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on. No, it put me in chapter one again. <laughs> it's doing that for some reason. I don't understand why. That's okay. That's all right. John 14, 14 25, 25 and 26. Scott's got a different version. I'm using the web app version of it right now. Well, there you go. Yeah. Should be using that software. Yeah, I know. I got to get installed. I'm on Linux right now. Um, 1425. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. Jesus speaking mm-hmm. to the apostles, upper room before his arrest, Thursday night before the crucifixion. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have that I said to you. Okay. This is important because in John 13, he washes their feet, right? Uh, John 13, 30, I think says was night. So it's Thursday night. Okay. Our Thursday night. And so he starts teaching to the disciples, the apostles that are with him in the upper room. And he tells them these things. I, Jesus have spoken to you, the apostles while present with you, but the helper, that's actually the word paraclete, which means advocate. Okay. The helper, the one that's going to help you comes beside and helps the Holy spirit whom the father will send in my name. He will teach you all things. Okay, now here's the thing. He's going to teach you all things. There's a lot of people that will take this verse and another verse in chapter 16 we're going to look at, and they apply it to themselves. And so some people will say, well, look, the Holy Spirit teaches me outside the word because he guides me into all truth. He teaches and reveals all things to me. But then look at the next part of of John 14, 26. Nobody ever says this part. He will bring to remembrance all things that I've said to you. Like when we sit down to do this podcast, like, do we ever have to like study notes ahead of time? Or do we just say, you know what? I'm going to sit down and God's going to teach me all things and bring to my remembrance everything that Christ said to me. Ready recollection. Yeah. Uh, we have to study. We have to study. We There's, don't have the miraculous ability that was given to those people inspired in the first century. You do hear people say like, well, I'll just wait to hear what God's going to give to me. I'm going to get up here and just start speaking and they'll see what God gives me. And I think that's the problem because I've heard a lot of them say, I'm just, God's going to wait till God gives me something. And they say God gives them something and they start talking. I'm like, that does not line up at all with scripture. I can give you about four verses right now that contradicts. Yeah. But that's because they think the Holy Spirit is going to teach them all things and bring to remembrance all things I've said to you, Right. So they basically think this is being said directly to them, but it's not, it's not being said to them. It's being said to the apostles. That's the context, right? All things that I, Jesus says, said to you, Jesus didn't say anything directly to me. He's talking to people that he spent years in ministry with, right? Look at verse uh, 15. Sorry, verse 15. Uh, I said chapter 15. Look at uh, verse 26, chapter 15, verse 26. And read 26 and 27. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, 
he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Now, this right here should should destroy any idea of this oneness idea. Obviously, they're three separate personalities because he says, mm -hmm. when the helper, a different person, comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. If this is like one person, <laughs> then you've got, but when I send myself, whom I shall send from myself, myself, that proceeds from myself, I will testify, I will of, testify of myself. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, come on, obviously. And that's you also, ridiculous. in addition to myself and myself. Okay? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like you got schizophrenic. And so it's obviously, it's three separate persons, all right? But he says that, that the helper, the Holy Spirit, it's the paraclete, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, he's going to do what? He will testify of Christ, right? So then this is sort of a continuation, right? But go over to uh, John 16 and verse eight. And when he has come, the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. He will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. And then he goes, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my father, of judgment because the rule of this world is judged. How are you and I and other people convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment today? They're the words. Have you ever been sitting at home and all of a sudden you're just like, man, that's a sin. I've been doing that. Yeah. No, nobody ever comes to me and says, Aaron, I was sitting at home engaging in this sin and just God spoke to me and told me that that was a sin. Yeah. That's not how it works. It works when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. How? This yep. book. Now, in the first century, they had miraculous gifts until this book was written. So, yes, in the first century, there were miraculous things that served a purpose. They were mm -hmm. scaffolding. They were temporary. First Corinthians 13 says they were childish. <laughs> they, were, they were not mature things. Mm -hmm. It's like a grown man, Dave Miller, I heard him do lessons, like grown man with a binky. That was people mm -hmm. wanting miracles today. It was a grown man, a mature man with a binky in his mouth. He's like, that you shouldn't have that happen, right? So convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now look at verse 12. Tucker, read 12 through 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Okay, so you have Jesus speaking, telling the disciples, the apostles, I've got many more things to tell you, basically, but you aren't ready for them now. You can't bear them now. However, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. Jude 3, the faith was once delivered for all time. That means in the first century, all truth, nothing but truth was delivered, right? The whole truth, nothing but the truth. The truth. All truth was delivered in the first century whenever the inspired apostles through the miraculous gifts they had completed yeah. the text, right? So when it says, we'll guide you into all truth, that's not talking about me. That's not talking about Tucker. It's not talking about Scott. It's not talking about anybody out there today. And unfortunately, this is the other verse with 1426 and 27 that I see people bring up all the time and they usually say, well, this, you know, the, the God's going to guide me into all truth. Yet the things they teach don't line up with scripture. Or they'll say like, oh, well, the Holy Spirit's telling me right now to tell you something. Yeah. And I, you know what? I'm sitting there thinking, okay, if the Holy Spirit was really telling you that, number one, it should match up with the Bible and very rarely does it. It's always like, well, the Holy Spirit, you're saying he's telling you that, but the Holy Spirit told me here this. So shouldn't they match up if the Holy Spirit really told you that? I know this is from the Holy Spirit. Anybody that believes the Bible knows that this is from the Holy Spirit. It's been preserved. But when some random guy or girl tell me the Holy Spirit told me this and it doesn't line up with this, which one am I supposed to keep? Am I supposed to say, you know, this book's probably wrong and you're probably right. Of what's course the, not. What's the point of the Bible? If, if he can help us remember everything, what's the point of keeping the Bible? If yeah, I mean, the whole, remember it all? the whole purpose for the text is that once the text is formed, you don't need miraculous gifts anymore. You don't need those, those temporary things. For right? Why not 13. just... <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, and I was just gonna add on like what he's saying. Like, yeah. if if you don't need it, if it's not a part of God's plan, and He's just gonna speak to you directly, why wouldn't He just go ahead and put all the knowledge in there? Right? Yeah, like why? Yeah, like why wouldn't you just not give us a Bible so that we could have all truth with us at all times? And anytime I need to know something from the Lord, He can just speak to me. I mean, God's omniscient; He's all powerful. Yeah. It's not like He couldn't speak to all people exactly what they need at the right time. I mean, it's just basically this, this idea that, okay, look at, look at verse 13. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority. The Holy Spirit is not going to speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you of things to come. He will glorify me. So the Holy Spirit will glorify Christ. He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. 
So basically when you read the new Testament, when you read, you know, sometimes I'll say, you know, well, Jesus said in first Corinthians and people say, Jesus didn't say it. Paul said it. I'm like, well, Paul wrote it down, but he got the inspiration from the Holy spirit who was delivering the message of Christ. So this whole idea that like, well, you know, Jesus never talked about homosexuality, but, but Paul did. And Paul was a bigot. It's like, um, no, what Jesus wanted to be said, Paul wrote it down when yeah. homosexuality is condemned in first, you know, Romans one, 24, 27, that came from Jesus. Mm-hmm. So don't tell me Jesus never talked about this. And I'm not trying to pick that out. I'm just saying that's one I hear all the time specifically. Well, Jesus didn't say anything about it. Well, he did, you know? Yeah. 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 Basically the, uh, the new Testament, it's, it's all red words. Yeah. You could literally like just take some, well, it wouldn't work, but if you could magically go like this and literally everything, I would say even in your entire Bible, you know, if you want it to be read, that's fine. I mean, I don't, because David said that basically he spoke, his tongue spoke, moved by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The whole red word thing's done more damage than help. Yeah. It gives people the idea that one summer weight, like, oh, I'll Mm -hmm. stick with Jesus. It's like, yeah, that's not how it works. Because the argument is made. I've heard Mm -hmm. people say, yeah, but that's not red. That's not a red. Doesn't matter. That's a, that's a basic misunderstanding of how Bible inspiration even works, you know? And that's really sort of an important thing to, to understand. And the purpose of them having the Holy Spirit was leading up to the completion of the perfect. That's right. Which is scripture. That's right. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast has been sponsored by GBN, Gospel Broadcasting Network. You can download the app and start streaming every show, watch every episode, and discover the answers to life's biggest questions today. So Jesus promises them that the Holy Spirit's going to come to them once he goes away, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, John chapter 18, he's arrested. John chapter 19, 20, well, 19, he's crucified. Uh, is buried chapter 20 and 21. He resurrects. He spends 40, 50, 40 days with the disciples. He ascends from Bethany into heaven. Um, and then they're waiting and looking at Acts chapter two, Acts chapter two is when this promise of the Holy spirit to come to the apostles actually happens. Right? So when the day of Pentecost had fully come Acts two, one, they, who's they look at uh, Acts one twenty six. They cast their lots and it fell on Matthias. He was numbered with the 11 apostles. So the replacement for Judas is there. So when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they, the apostles were all with one accord in the place. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting and there appeared on them divided tongues like fire as of fire. And one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. So this is what Jesus promised. And it came to pass. And so then look at what happens. Uh, Verse five, they were dwelling in Jerusalem, (laughs) Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. When the sound occurred, the multitude came together. They were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. So you saw the word tongue in verse four. A tongue is a language, right? It's just two different words. Glossa is the word for tongue, right? And verse eight is going to show that it's languages. Uh, Verse seven, they were all amazed and marveled saying, are these guys not Galileans? Like, wait a minute. They should have an accent from Galilee. Oh, how all of a sudden do they know all these foreign languages, right? Verse eight, how is it that we hear each in our own language dialect in which we were born? And then he gives all these different lang- these different languages and regions. In verse 11, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, our own languages, the wonderful works of God. So you see this fulfillment of this promise, which was, hey, the Holy Spirit is going to speak for you. You're going to remember all the things you need to. That's something that was made to the apostles. And as you go through the book of Acts, the speaking in tongues was a miraculous gift that was given by the laying on of who? Go to Acts 8. <laughs> I was going to say it, but. <laughs> of what? I was going to say it, but I didn't know if you were building up the laying yeah. on of. Yeah, the laying on of. Hands. Hands. The Guess whose hands? The apostles. The apostles' hands, right? Acts eight fourteen. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Well, why, why not? Verse 12 says they, uh, Philip preached things concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized, right? So they were, they were baptized. Yeah. Okay. Verse 12, verse 14. Now, when the apostles of Jerusalem heard Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John who, when they had come down, prayed for them, they might receive the Holy spirit. So they've been baptized, but what has not happened yet? They haven't they received, they haven't the, Holy received Holy the Holy spirit. Why not? Look at verse 16. They haven't been there. That's right. They haven't been there. They haven't had their hands laid on by apostles. Mm -hmm. For as yet he, the Holy Spirit, had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw, here's what Simon sees, that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given 
he offered them money. Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the what? Yeah. The gift or our, our, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Verse 20 calls it the gift of God. You thought the yeah. gift of God could be purchased with money, right? Yeah. So you see that this, this miraculous gift of the Holy Spirit was given by the laying on of what? Of hands. Of hands. Now go to Acts 19. Acts 19. You got these guys in Ephesus. Somebody read Acts 19, one through six. Okay. <clears throat> And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there be a, whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Now, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with the tongues and prophesied, or spoke with tongues and prophesied. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, the men were 12 in all. Sure. So, in Acts 2, uh, and you, the gift of the Holy or the, uh, the gift of tongues, miraculous gift is given, right? I think Acts 238 gift of the Holy Spirit is miraculous gifts. Cause it talks about verse 39, the promise, which verse 33 says they see in here, which I is too. Okay. And that's also in light of these passages. Yeah, right. exactly. You know, and so you sense. get, to, you get to Acts eight and you know, it says they've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, yeah. but they didn't have the Holy Spirit till the apostles laid hands on right. it. Acts 19 baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards they have hands laid on, they receive the miraculous ability and they speak in tongues. Right. Right. So I feel like that's a pretty consistent pattern. Now, when you go to the epistles, I think that most of the references to the Holy Spirit being given in the seal and stuff is a reference to what you learn how happened in Acts, right? Mm-hmm. So now let's go to like a passage like Galatians, right? I want to look at this one more thing about, I guess talking about the miraculous gift, but we're just trying to show this is how in the first century, the miraculous gift was the way that, that you knew you were following the truth, right? right. Yeah. Like today, two guys walk into a room or you're watching this podcast and you watch another podcast and we say two different things. How do you know which one's true? You compare it with the scripture. What if you don't have a scripture? Go get one. Well, in the first century. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. Go to a different city and make a copy. Oh, but no, you're talking about now. Yeah. Yeah. Back then, back then. Back then yeah. They had what? proof. You didn't have, you needed proof. You needed a seal. You needed to know, Hey, how do I know I'm following yeah. the truth? Right? So like, I like to look at Galatians three, right? This is where Paul has been to Galatia. He showed them, he worked miracles. They knew he was teaching the truth. And now they're getting bewitched by these false teachers. And he says in Galatians 3, 1, Oh, foolish Galatians, who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes was Jesus Christ clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This I want to learn. Did you receive the spirit, okay, by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So did you receive the Holy Spirit, these miraculous gifts, by these false teachers teaching you to obey the law of Moses? which is what the Galatians or by the hearing of faith or by us, the ones who are teaching the gospel, who laid hands on you and gave you what miraculous, miraculous gifts. gifts. Yeah. Are you so foolish? Like how can you literally look at these guys who don't have miraculous gifts? We as apostles have miraculous gifts and you're somehow following across, following them, right? Look at verse five. Therefore he that supplies the spirit to you and does what works miracles among you. Does he do by the works of the law? Of course not. Or by the hearing of faith. So basically then look over, uh, no, that's good. We don't need to go any more about that. But basically what he's saying is you can look and see who had the truth in the first century by who could work miracles. Mark 16, 17 through 20 talks about they went out and they worked miracles, confirming the word by what? The following, confirming the word by the following miracles and signs. That was the purpose for miracles. Confirm what the person speaking was true. Yeah, pretty much every time God speaks and he has an important message to give, he, he always endorses that person somehow or another. That's right. Uh, most of the time through miraculous gifts. I That's mean, right. Uh, or just a miraculous event. I mean, he's used the, the miraculous in other ways besides just with people, but it's always to confer some, some kind of message, right? Yeah. I'm just thinking of Balaam's yeah. donkey, but not that it's yeah. particularly relevant going into that story very much, but... You know, yeah, every time. Every I like time. that story. Whenever someone tells me, well, so-and-so spoke in tongues, that means they were saved. It's like, well, Balaam's donkey spoke, but. <laughs> yeah, that's like a side note, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, working miracles doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the state of your salvation. I agree. Probably. It now, also shows you, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. It also shows you too, like these people knew of the miracles and yet they still didn't believe. Yeah. So yeah. just because they're not, hap- they're not happening today because there was a purpose for them. Yeah. But if there were, doesn't mean people are going to believe. Well, and I think too, sometimes we need to keep in mind what, when we talk about the book of revelation, we say, put on our what? 
Oh, first century glasses. Our first century glasses. I used to have to wear glasses and contacts and then I had LASIK and I saw a guy like a really good pair of glasses yesterday. I was like, I like to wear glasses again. I should get some of these like fake lenses. I just doesn't help my vision. <laughs> but non-prescription. No, non-prescription. It's yeah. a blue light filter. Season ones. four. Maybe I could do that. Blue, blue light. There we blue go. Light filter. Okay. All right. Wear Season glasses. four. You got away. Season four. Yeah. Okay. But like if you forget the first century context, you can easily read a passage and say, oh, this talks about this miraculous gift. This talks about this seal of the Holy Spirit. This talks about X. That must mean I'm going to get that today. Mm -hmm. We don't have any problem when we read something about something else that's like cultural to that time, right? But like, this is this is what I see. I'll see somebody say this. I'll say something about like, look, the Holy Spirit doesn't guide you into all truth. And they'll say, Aaron, if you look at the Bible, look at 1 John chapter 2 and verse 26. These things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, right? So John is writing to the church saying, hey, I'm telling you about these people that try to deceive you. Verse 27, but the anointing which you have received from him, the, the anointing you've received, Christians, from him abides in you. You don't need anyone to teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true, it's not a lie, just as it has taught you and you will abide in him. So basically what that passage is saying to the people in the first century who had miraculous gifts gifts is look, you have miraculous gifts. Like you can discern these things. Like you don't need anybody to teach you. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, how much sense does that make when there's all these passages about second Timothy two, two teach what men teach yeah. other men, yeah. faithful men, the great commission, go into the world, preach the, the gospel to every creature, baptizing and teaching them to observe all things. First John two saying, look, you don't need to teach certain things because you have miraculous gifts. That's what I think is taken. Mm -hmm. It's saying there, right? Because you look at things in context. So the question then becomes, if God spoke to people through his son directly, yep. his son through inspiration, through the apostles, and through miraculous gifts. Because like in 1 Corinthians 14, you've got people who were fighting over the miraculous gifts. But like in 1 Corinthians 14, you've got, oh, let me see if I can find it, where it says the, the uh, spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets, which basically mm. means like you guys can speak in tongues whenever you want to. Uh, it's first Corinthians 14, 32. Uh, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. So in that context, he's saying, look, like if you don't have an interpreter, you can keep your gift to yourself. Like you don't need to be speaking in a foreign language if there's no interpreter, All right. which means if you had the gifts they have, you could speak in tongues on command. It's, it's, it's pointless. Yeah. It. It's vain use because it's always to help teach or confirm God's message, his will. That's right. And so once it's been confirmed, you don't need the miraculous gifts anymore. And I, I remember once I was studying with these two young guys. Um, I won't say what group they're with, but they said that they had miraculous gifts. And I said, really? And I was genuinely curious. I was not being a smart aleck because I've always approached it like, look, if, if this exists, prove it to me because I want to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I asked him, the guy said, we have miraculous gifts. And I said, you do. And they said, yeah. I said, okay, just like, I'm not being smart. Like, tell me how it works. Like, I'm curious how it works. And the one guy said that he has the gift of tongues. And the other guy said that he has the gift of interpreting tongues. And I said, okay, the guy that has tongues, how does it work? Like, can you just make it happen? And he's like, no, it hasn't happened to me yet. I said, well, how do you know you have it? He's like, well, the church leader told me that that was the gift that I had. I said, so your church leader told you, you had the gift of speaking in tongues, but it's never happened to you. He said, yes, he was honest about it. And I just said, okay, like, I didn't make fun. I didn't yeah. say, well, I didn't yeah. actually bring up this verse. Well, the, the text in first Corinthians 14 says the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets, which means if you really have that gift, you'd be able to do it right now. Right. Yeah. It's under your control. Yeah. But like, there's a lot of misunderstanding about this because people will read their Bibles and say, oh, wow, these guys had all these miraculous gifts. And they'll even go to passages like, you know, Ephesians four, where it says he set some to be apostles and prophets and teachers and all this. And they'll say, well, some of those still exist. And they do. Teachers still exist in the church, right? But there is a text that elaborates and says, look, these miraculous gifts, they were going to last for a certain time and they were going to pass away. Go to 1 Corinthians 13. We're already in 1 Corinthians. Yeah. We're, yeah. I'm just a few above it. So 1 Corinthians 13, um, he's dealing with the problems in Corinth where people basically thought they were cooler because they had cooler spiritual gifts. And it seems like speaking in tongues, they thought was like the coolest spiritual gift, right? And so he's basically trying to tell them that love, the most important thing in their congregation is love for the brethren, right? Yeah. Somebody want to read 13, start reading one. I got you. Though I speak with tongues of men <clears throat> and of angels, but have not love, I've become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I had the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, 
And though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's good. For right now, I'm going to let you continue. Cool. Basically, the whole, I mean, these are beautiful verses. People read at weddings a lot, which is good. You should have married love like that, but it's actually congregational love. This is how you should have towards the members of your church, right? Yeah. And so he basically says, if you do all these great things, but you don't have love, it's worthless. And the point he's making is, hey, if you had all these great miraculous gifts, but you don't have love for your brethren, it's worthless, right? Yeah. Now, Go ahead and read, start in verse eight. Notice the contrast between things that are partial and things that are complete and full, things that are temporary, things that are going to, that are not going to pass away, things that will pass away, things that won't. And notice that he's talking about miraculous things here. The whole context of 12 through 14 is miraculous, right? So, you know, in verse eight, love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, that's miraculous prophecy, Mm -hmm. okay? That's the whole context. They will fail. They will stop. They will cease. All right. So go ahead and read in verse eight, Tucker. Uh, Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. What does tongues mean? Uh, Being miraculous, speaking in tongues. Yes. And tongues are languages. Languages. Does that mean in heaven, there's going to be no language at all? Like we're not going to be able to communicate or talk with anybody? He's just saying whether there's people that can speak differently. But that's what shows you the miraculous. It shows you it's miraculous because no matter what you do, if you say this is not miraculous, you know, whether there's languages, they will cease. So there's going to be a point in eternity where there's no language. Like yeah. I can't communicate with God or anything. No, of course yeah. not. It's miraculous. Yeah. It's just like prophecies. Are you saying that they're going to fail? Like the prophecies aren't going to come true? Yeah. No, he's just saying the gift of prophecy, yeah. being yeah. able to prophesy. Yeah, exactly. So it's miraculous. Okay. Go ahead, Tucker. Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, whether there is knowledge. Whether there's knowledge, it will vanish away. Miraculous For- knowledge. There's going to be knowledge in heaven. So yeah, obviously normal knowledge. That's right. Miraculous knowledge. Right. <laughs> yeah. It will stop. It'll vanish away. Yeah. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, and then you may keep going or I'll interrupt. So he says, when we know in part, what's, yeah. what's the whole context, the miraculous gifts, the things yep. they're teaching through miraculous gifts. But when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part will be done away. So something yeah. is going to come that is going to remove the need for the miraculous. And if the purpose of the miraculous was to confirm the word, then whenever what arrives, you won't have the need for it anymore. I mean, Jesus already come once. Yeah, that's right. You won't have the need of that system, that partial system. Yeah. Because the part, I mean, what is the part here? The part is certainly not the truth. No. He's not saying he's going to do away with part of the truth when Mm. the completed truth comes. So no, he's talking about that way that they had Partial knowledge. Of operating. Yeah. yeah uh, in the meantime. Until exactly. This, until this, the Bible was completed. Exactly. Yeah. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. But now abide, and now abide in faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So this whole section here is talking about how the abuse of miraculous gifts needs to be replaced by love. And then he says, look, the reason you need to get over this and have love is because they're not going to last forever, right? The whole purpose of miracles, Hebrews 2, 2, Hebrews 2, 3, and 4, Hebrews 2, 3, and 4, Mark 16, 17 to 20. The purpose of the miraculous was to confirm the person was speaking from God. John 3, Nicodemus said that, teacher, we know you're rabbi, teacher, we know that you're a teacher come from God because of the works that you do. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole reason that John 5, how do you know Jesus that I'm Jesus? How do you know I'm from God? Well, you look at the works I did. Look at the miracles. Where'd the power yeah. come from? So basically, when you when you have that idea, you say, okay, look, Jesus spoke, yeah. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, spoke many ways in, in many times in the past with the prophets, but now he speaks through his son. Yeah. Jesus spoke directly. He spoke through the apostles, through inspiration, the yep. inspired writers who had the gift, miraculous gifts given to them laying on by the apostles' hands. Mm-hmm. What happens when all the apostles die? The, you're, they're not going to be able to give any more miraculous gifts. So yep. it's all going to die. And out. no one else can pass it down No, because in Acts 8, that account we looked at, Philip was already preaching and like, Philip couldn't yeah. give the gifts because he wasn't an apostle. Yeah. So once all the inspired people that were given gifts die off, once the apostles die off, mm-hmm. where are the gifts going to come from? Mm. And so from that yeah. point, then you have the completed scripture and then how does God speak to you today? It, it's, it's weird. It's like it speaks to you when you open your ears and listen, when you open the Bible, you read it. Prayer is you talking to God yep. and you hearing from him is opening this book. Yeah. I guess the way I yeah. said that could be confusing, but what I mean is yeah. when you actually take the scripture, what he's reading, yeah. you read it. Yeah. 
or you listen to audio or you listen to an audio book or you know if that's not available you listen to someone who can read to you yep whatever yep well scripture is telling us hey like it's going to come in in for the miraculous gifts Mm -hmm. um the faith has been once delivered and so anybody that's saying the things today are just making the stuff up yeah, I think, I think, I mean, that's the, that's the simple way to say it is they're making it up. I think sometimes they're confused. Um, I think some people are super sincere about it. And yeah. honestly, oh, yeah. imagine I if since most the, of them probably believe that what they're experiencing is it, but yeah, it's, I think so. You can convince yourself mm-hmm. of a lot of things. Well, imagine if from the time you're a kid, you have people who respect you, you, you respect them, you love them. And they're telling you that God will speak to you, you know? And then yeah. like, you have a thought and you're like, maybe that was that God. Maybe yeah. that was God. Yeah. You know? Um, I mean, I've been there growing up thinking, mm-hmm. Oh, maybe there's a sign on the ground from God like, mm-hmm. or different things. And then, well, yeah, you just, I can remember situations where like, I remember one specific situation. I was somewhere in North Carolina and uh, for a work before I came to GBM when I was doing the biotech stuff and I was sitting in a corner and I saw this like guy, homeless guy sitting on a corner. And I remember thinking, does the Holy spirit want me to go talk to him? But back then I wasn't, I didn't have my Bible. And it's like, well, the Holy Spirit was not telling me, go talk to that guy. But if I can think, oh, this person over here needs help. And I, oh, the Bible says I'm supposed to help people who are truly in need. Then I'm getting direction from God, but it's not this direct voice to me. It's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's yes, from the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is telling you to talk to him, but how? Not directly to my head. Not directly to your head. Through the knowledge he gave that's in right. the word that I put in my brain that sits he here said, and reminds me of things to do. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's right. That's and right. I don't know if we've ever done an episode fully on this, but there's a difference between miraculous gifts. They ended, but then God's providence still at work. That's right. Of course. Of course. So like... You know, God is pulling the strings, if you want to say, behind the scenes. We don't know how it works sometimes, mm-hmm. but there are certain situations that happen and you're like, whoa, that was wild. Yeah. You know, we've talked about, I think providence is more powerful than miracles because if a guy has cancer, God could just snap his finger, you know, if anthrop- anthropomorphism, God doesn't have fingers, so spirit uh-huh. doesn't have flesh and bones, yeah. but God could just heal it. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. But, What's yeah. that? I said, well, Jesus, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like God in the spirit form, yeah. but yeah. But yeah, like he could just heal it miraculously. Yeah. Or, 20 years ago, I probably said this before. I say some of the same things on the podcast. If you're a watcher, yeah, you're like, hey, he's going sure down this something. analogy again. But, you know, if you, God raised up a doctor 20 years ago <laughs> to prepare to solve this one, you know, cure or disease or whatever, yeah. like that's still God healing somebody. He just did it through providential means. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, okay. Summary. At the beginning, we said, look, each human has free will. You can believe whatever you want to believe. Mm-hmm. If you choose to say, you know what? I really want my sexual freedom, so I'm going to not believe this Bible stuff. God will let you. He'll let you believe a lie. Yeah. He'll let you, Romans one twenty and following, see the truth, see the creation, but reject the creator and start serving the creature. He'll let you go to, he'll give you over to the point where you look back and you think, I don't really know what came first. Was it my desire for sexual freedom or my non-belief in the Bible? You know, like God will let you believe a lie mm-hmm. and- God will send you a strong delusion. You know, he'll let you do it if you don't want to believe the truth, you know? So God's used different ways to speak to different people, but then God said, I'm going to use my son. Scripture tells us Jesus is the word. Jesus spoke. Jesus told the apostles, the Holy spirit would guide them into all truth. The faith was what delivered once, once delivered, once delivered for all. Two, three. And so the Holy spirit speaks to us today through his word, his word. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we read the Bible, we're reading what? We're reading the words of Jesus, the words of the Holy Spirit. That's right. So if you want to hear from God today, open open up your Bible and read read it. it. Yep. Yeah. Put on the audio. Put on the audio. (laughs) It won't be God's voice. It won't. It might be like, oh, what's the guy from? It'll be uh, God's word. If you build it, he will come. Uh, Jones. Oh, Oh, you're talking Field of Dreams. Yeah, Field of Dreams. Yeah. I can't think of his name. I don't know. He's the version. If you open my audio Bible. (laughs) If you you open it, you will learn. (laughs) That's the guy that reads it. I can't remember his name. Yeah, but that's who it is. Well, the one I had was. I'm yeah. not saying. I don't know who else. What, not, oh, audio. Kevin Costner. No, no. The, oh. the guy, the voice, like the famous voice, Darth Vader voice. Oh, Earl Jones. Oh. Earl Jones. Uh, Earl no. James Jones. Earl, yeah. Something like It's close. Yeah. Or you're Vader. getting closer. Yeah. I've seen that commercial. Okay. I've, yeah, I've James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sandlot. There we go. We'll look it up. So off topic a little bit. Sorry. But um, it's okay. Yeah, that, you know, if you open up your Bible, on your app, you may hear a voice, but it will be James Earl Jones <laughs> reading you the scripture. I need the James Earl Jones <laughs> Darth audio Vader. Bible. It's yeah. great. It's good. He's good. He reads yeah. good. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in the Authentic Christian Podcast. Once again, if you want to hear from God, open up your Bible. You can pray 
and then open up your Bible and read. And we hope that that'll help you grow. And if you disagree, reach out to us. Yeah, open it up every day. Read as much as you can. I'm Aaron, Tucker, Scott. We'll see you next time on the Authentic Christian Podcast. Thanks for watching.